a checkup today. And we have loads of babies coming in for their checkups, don't we? Yes, yes. So one of the things that uh, you asked me about was how is it that so many people bring their children for chiropractic care, mm -hmm. yes, and it's because it is very safe. You know, one of the things that we know is that babies, they have obviously got a very soft spine, they've got a very, very beautiful and soft um, uh, beginning of developing a, a strong spine. So we want to make sure that everything is done very softly. Because people may be worried, they might have seen a video of an adult being treated and they think, oh, what is it like? And actually, it's very, very soft when we treat the babies. We don't do the same adjustments as we do with adults, do we? No, we don't. Yes. yes. From what age is it safe to uh, start chiropractic care? Really, it can be started from before they're even born. So obviously we see their mothers first and then after the birth, we can even check babies right from the first moment after birth. And I've done that many times. But it's nice to get the babies checked within the first three weeks of life because that is the time when they really start to come out of their little bubble. They come out of their little bubble and they start expressing if they are in discomfort. Yes, yes. 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 so when we look at the, um, the nappy, <laughs> it's okay to have some baby sounds. Um, uh, the, we often think that ah, the nappy maybe is too thick or that the cloth neck nappies are taking too much uh, space between their legs so that their legs have to be out of it. But actually, a thin cloth nappy is very handy. It can feel very nice. But what's nice uh, with, the, with the cloth nappies is that we do have a little bit more pressure towards the hips here. It's very minor and it's actually soft. So it's not that it's limiting the baby, but it allows for the hips to stay in the position we wanted to stay a lot in the beginning of the, the development. So for the hip sockets to develop correctly in uh, the way they attach to the pelvis, it's a ball and socket joint. So in the pelvis, it's a hollow like this, and then the hip comes into the, to the hollow of the pelvis. Is that clear? So yeah. the top of the leg, where the leg goes into the hip here, is a ball on the top of the leg, and then there is a socket inside. Now that, we want that to be developing well, and actually what babies need is to be with a frog-like position quite a lot for that. So when we are working with the, uh, uh, babies that have a problem with that, remember we've probably all seen these harnesses that are put on. Yeah. And uh, that can be because the, the socket was shallow, so they then want to put the hips out in this position in order to improve it. But for any baby, having the legs in this position is the correct thing. Having the legs down the way in a baby carrier is not good because it's not promoting that development of the hip socket. So that's why it's not a problem with the cloth nappies to use them because it's actually developing good hip development. And also it's very soft so that the babies are... Uh, babies are always comfortable with them. They're not plastic, which is a good thing, right? And I would say that, I don't have the number on top of my head, but the number of nappies that are disposed, I think it's something like... 6,000 6, per child. 6,000 nappies per child by the time they've been out, coming out of the nappies. That goes in the bin. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's so much wastage. And just from that perspective, I would say you would always go with something like this. And the beautiful thing with this is that you can adjust these nappies to any age. So you have one set, you know, one set of cloths that goes in here. So the way you put it up is that you just literally um, fold up the nappy so that the this little button can fit inside. So depending on which way you are, what, what's next for the baby, I have to do this right, this way here. You put that and stick it on inside so that it's it sticks somewhere. It's just to give it some stability. Put the whole nappy inside, and that's it. You're now ready to go. So you can then put the nappy onto the baby. We're going to show that in a second how that is. And this is uh, absorbent. So or um, what do you call it? You call it? Yes, it's uh, the top part is hydrophobic, so it doesn't hold any any wetness. Yes. While the inside part is absorbent, so it holds all the weeds, and the outer outside part is, is waterproof. Waterproof. Yes. Yeah. So this hydrophobic uh, material is soft on the baby, and it feels dry on the skin, which is important. Again, that, these ones have these fabrics inside that's supposed to do that, 
and to make it dry. But I remember even on my children when they were small that it was sticking sometimes um, on their on their bum when it was um, getting dry after a while. So this one as well, you can have an extra one in if they need it for the bigger babies. Then there's an opportunity for another one depending on how wet the nappies are. Maybe at night time you want to bring something else. So that's the the one thing I want to do. And as they are growing, you can just open it up and make it bigger. So in yep. the beginning you will have it smaller. And you would have it like this. You can fold the piece inside so that it fits better. But even like this, you have then a smaller nappy so that the baby is able to, um, to so it's nice and tight. And here again, it fits neatly around the hips so it doesn't have leakage. This one has a double. Uh, it's a double gusset, rubber. yeah. Yeah, so that there is no leakage on the side. And also, it's better for the spine. It doesn't go so far up on the spine like this one does. And that prevents from um, having that sweatiness at the bottom of the spine as well. And actually, it's very, very nice and flexible for their mobility on the spine. So we're going to show how we are changing the nappy on Olivia in a second. And um, how it is to, to do that in a way that's safe for the spine. One thing I find is often the babies that especially come to our office, you know, they might be a bit grumpy because they have tummy aches and things like that. And um, if there's pressure on the belly, that might not be one of the reasons why they don't like to get their nappies changed. Plus, it actually can be uncomfortable for them. So we want to make sure that we're putting the baby on the side instead. We're going to demonstrate it. But basically, instead of having... So when you take off the nappy, you take it off and you can then wipe the front of the baby. Then instead of doing this, pushing up the spine to wipe behind because sometimes the poop is all the way up to the neck right so we do this for that to happen the thing to do is to put the baby sideways and you can clean the spine easily you can clean the, the bum easily put the baby back if you need to do the other hip you can do it here as well and the same thing as the baby is there you literally just come underneath with the nappy pop the baby back and put it up right yeah. So that's the idea of being safe, because we don't want to bend the spine so much. It's okay to do little exercises, but don't bend it too much and crunch the spine. The babies actually don't like that too much. So you just take the baby to the side, wipe, nappy changed, get the other one underneath, pull the baby back, and then you can do this in a nice way. You can see that the baby is actually happy with that. We'll show it on the video as well. We're going to show it on the baby to make it a little bit more clear. Yes. Um, and actually, uh, another big benefit of cloth nappies is that the, the poop does not go all the way to the neck. The <laughs> elastic in the back holds it all nicely in place. So when people are afraid of cloth nappies because they have to deal with poop, it's much better to deal with poop on the bum than to deal the poop in hair. So <laughs> Exactly. So it does hold it in and it gives a space actually underneath to move in there. Yeah. This one's because they're flat, you know, everything just moves straight up. But, you know, I, feel, I, I do feel that this is actually promoting spinal development, it promotes um, the, uh, the hip development, we clearly can see that. As um, you see it in front of you and also as you've seen it on the baby, would you think it restricts movement in any way? No, it doesn't. When babies are small as well, they are um, obviously not moving as much on their own, right? So in that time, it is a, uh, the bulk is a bit bigger at that time. But as the baby grows, the bulk of the nappy gets smaller as such between their legs and around their feet. And they have full mobility with it. There is no, because this is elastic, you know, it's not a, as well, it, has, it moves with the baby. It doesn't restrict them from anything. I would say that this particular brand uh, Vivolino, which is the one that's actually been made in Cyprus, and I love that because they have thought about the fabrics in terms of the heat, because we have many months of a lot of heat here, and it's sweaty, easy to be sweaty. And um, this this nappy brand, I must say, is the best one I've seen so far. I've analyzed and seen and looked at so many different brands of this over the years, and um, this is by far the easiest one to use, the easiest one to understand how it fits together and the, e the best one in terms of its lightness and its flexibility for the baby. Uh, because there are some out there that are very stiff. I remember in the old days when we had the actual just cloth, you know, we folded it and, that and tied it up. And I believe I had those nappies as I grew up. My mom had done little nice hearts on each and every one of them and washed them by hand at that time. But, you know, it is not a new thing. You know, cloth nappies have been around for donkey's years and it, I think it is just getting more and more you know, that technologically, if we say, or more and more um, user-friendly for Since babies. you did mention user-friendly, 
this right now, right in front of the camera, was the first time you actually put the inserts in. It was it was simple, wasn't it? Yeah, very simple. I was showing these now today how to put it in because I've had them here in my office and I've been going even other people, but I hadn't actually looked into how do I put this together. So uh, that was shown to me for a few seconds before we started today, and you see, I could manage it. I think anybody can manage it because it's not a complicated thing. Often we see daddies get really good at this because they work out and folding and they got it all perfect, you know. But honestly, in terms of leakage, you are as safe as with any other nappy and probably better. So I think that's really good. Let's see if we can get Olivia to show us and give us a little bit. Anything else that you had any questions for me? Just to really there? drive the point home because this is something people are very concerned about is the delay in walking. Would you expect the nappies to delay or prevent or have any issues towards walking? I mean, if we've had, like you said, we've had cloth nappies for as far back as we can think, and they were a lot bigger and a lot bulkier before, yeah. and we've all walked, but uh, would you think that it would have prevent walking in any way? No, particularly because it actually promotes hip development in the early phase when babies are you know, pretty much meant to be on us a lot and with the frog leg uh, position of the, of the hips. In that time, the, the hip is, as we said, getting developed. And if there's good development of the hip, then there is also better stand later on. And if we, on top of that, protect how we are doing things and we look after their spines and being nice and flexible and mobile, you know, the, that promotes good opportunity to, to walk in the right time and to crawl in the right time. But the babies are not restricted by the snappies at all. Like, they're not really, that's the case. Um, uh, I heard the same when people often know, it's so chunky and bulky. And this is definitely not chunky and bulky. Yes, I agree, some of the ones in the past were probably on the edge of that and we were questioning it a bit, but none of these uh, neural nappies are any risk for the walking. I can absolutely guarantee that. Perfect. Okay, let's get the baby back in. Yes, we said when we're changing a nappy. I've got another nappy on now just for the sake of privacy. What you want to do instead of you take off the nappy, you can wipe the front, then take the baby to the side and wipe the back of the baby. Then you take off the nappy, get your another nappy in, roll it in underneath, and put the baby back onto the nappy. Straighten it out. And then bring the nappy around to change it. So what is the importance here is that we are allowing for the spine to be nice and straight. We don't need to open and put on one for the sake of it now. And bye 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 bye. This is classic. Babies don't like nappies being changed. No, they don't like nappies being changed. No, no. Just a question about the technique, because you said it's so gentle, it's like touching your eye. Is that effective? Yes, it is. Because, there, again, the baby's spines are very, very responsive and very, very... Um, I would say, if you think about it, how magical is it that the baby, you know, there's a conception and then this person grows inside another person's body and then gets born in, through a very complicated birth canal, uh, which is not just, you know, straight out. It's like going like this. And at the same time, the baby has to turn and come out. It's a pretty complicated pathway. Then they are born. Then they are able to crawl up to the breast, literally, because of the reflexes they have, put the, 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 get the breast, you know, in their mouth, suck and feed, and then, you know, be able to grow and develop and do everything that it is. It is magical. And the body is such a very, very strong uh, natural power in terms of self-healing and in terms of development, right? So we have to establish that. Even if you cut yourself, you know, immediately this body will heal itself, right? It is the body that's just the healing. So what's my job is not really um, to be too intervening. What I want to do is just stimulate and allow for the body to do its natural things, right? So when we are looking at the baby's development, this is the really important part of my assessment is to look at the baby's development. Are they able to turn their head, suck, get to the breast in an easy way? Because this is the first reflexes through the cranial nerves that we see, is to be able to smell, move the head and find the breast and suck. These are so important, so primal, these reflexes. And the baby needs to be able to do them. So the problems with doing that is that maybe there has been some sort of trauma, some sort of effect on the spine that has the baby is not maybe able to move and uh, the spine is restricted for the baby to do those basic things. So what we check is that, and it doesn't need a lot of force to correct that, but you really got to know where and how to do it, to stimulate it, okay? It's very, very important that the babies are following their developmental stages. 
So yes, people come in with different symptoms, but what we uh, understand is that we need to have this proper development and the proper reflexes to do the different things at different times that the baby is able to do the movement they're supposed to do. So that's what we assess and that's what we treat is the musculoskeletal system so that it's able in a neuro neurological system so that the baby is able to do what it needs to do to grow and develop. So that's why when uh, we explain obviously that when we see our, the parents coming in, so it's not that we can cure all those conditions, but what we do know is that when the baby is moving and behaving and um, uh, being able to do what it needs to do, they are usually happy and they are quite content. So we could say that babies under chiropractic care are usually more content, they are, um, they, it helps them to be calm, it helps them to be uh, relaxed and they are more relaxing to hold so that they can you know, be in the different positions that you are holding them easier because they are relaxed and therefore you know, life is easier and they cry less. So that's the really the, the So thing. you would say that um, spinal health uh, can sometimes lead to reduction of these other symptoms that parents might have thought was colic or but if you just have proper spinal health you would just facilitate a baby that cries less or a baby that feeds better. Yes that's part of it but there's also the neurological stimulation that happens and uh, the when we are touching and, and, and treating the babies there is this relaxation that happens and that relaxation itself has a positive effect on how the natural functions are playing. So it's not just about the spinal health, the mobility, it's also the treatment itself is relaxing for adults and for babies. So the um, symptoms can sometimes change and that's the positive side effect of the chiropractic care is that symptoms can change and that's individual to each baby, how those symptoms are or how they are changing. And um, uh, we obviously always collaborate a lot. You know, a lot of the babies that come into my office is referrals from pediatricians, which means that they see the lateral, that, that, that help from chiropractic care is something that can help the babies, and we are working together. So if there's something serious that's going on with a baby, you know, that doesn't have, is not helped by chiropractic care, you know, we can collaborate and communicate back and forth with the pediatrician so that they are getting the help they need in all aspects. But sometimes they need other treatments than you know what we are able to offer in the chiropractic office. But as a collaborative team, you know we can really help the babies on all levels. So, but very often people see a reduction in many symptoms because the baby is happier and more relaxed. Birth can have uh, a big effect on a baby, right? And checking a baby after after it was born, it's just a way to also check how how the birth affected them. Yeah, so when we go do the initial examination with a baby, we go very thoroughly through the history. We look at every aspect of the history of the pregnancy, even preconception, what the mother's health has been before, during the pregnancy, and the delivery itself. Uh, Dr. Michelle Odent, who is a very famous and um, uh, acknowledged gynecologist, uh, he was the one who brought the water birth back into the concept of, of uh, birthing, and he has a uh, he's now in his 90s. I've had the opportunity to interview him. And he has, from his primary research database, he established that the most profound, most important time of our life in terms of how our physical and mental well-being later in life are likely is the moment of birth. So he puts a lot of emphasis on the time of birth um, for various reasons that can be that moment but what we do know is that the birth itself has a big impact on how we develop and how we are. From my perspective it is uh, and from a chiropractic point of view we are looking at that process and thinking like what happened like how was that process for the baby for the mother and um, uh, even very short or very long labors you know can be equally traumatic and such and particularly if there's been complications and uh, remember, like we said earlier, the baby has to go down through the birth channel and come out, like through a 90 degree uh, exit, in a sense, uh, and also have to twist and turn at that time. And when the baby is moving through the birth channel in the optimal position, they have the opportunity to, uh, the, the reflexes are there to help that movement to happen. So with every contraction, the baby is pushed a little bit down, then the release of the contraction, the baby wiggles a bit more, they come a little bit into a better position, they go for the next phase, next, 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 until the baby is born. Now, if there's complications there, the baby's back to back, or the baby is in a position that's not optimal, the birth takes a lot of time, 
um, there is um, uh, any complications, there is a correlation and an associated factor with how the baby is experiencing their opportunities afterwards, how fast they're on the breast, how fast they are able to do the natural things we spoke about earlier. So we do take into account how the birth has been and how if there's been any major effect or trauma there. And uh, there are some association there in terms of how the babies are expressing life and health afterwards, that they thrive, that they are in a, a good place. So remember, this is associated factors. It's not like one causes the other. We have to look at the whole picture always. But we can uh, assume in some cases when we see the baby, there is uh, and restrictions in their spine that it has to do with how they either were positioned in the uterus over a longer period of time or how the actual birth process was. So whatever we find that might be related to that or unrelated to that, we, of course, work on re reducing that stress and that restriction on the baby. If it was a traumatic birth, do you think it would be beneficial to come for a check just to correct that or check that any of that trauma is corrected? I think even, you know, the most beautiful natural birth, you know, it's a big job. <laughs> it's a pretty big job for the mom, for the baby. I think, you know, any baby yeah, could benefit from being checked. Because it is not a harmful process to do in any way. There is no intervention without treatments that are harmful. So I think it's a really nice and uh, logical thing to do because we can check and adjust and see if there's anything that is restricted. So I would wish for every baby that they were checked and just assessed and treated right at the beginning to be allowing them to have that relaxation that they sometimes don't get as they come out. You know, sometimes it's a, literally a choice of fight flight as they come out. And they are really tense from the beginning. And I think if we can help them to relax, unfold, and start their life in the most you know, relaxed state, I think that has a benefit on their life. And um, so that's why I think anybody, any baby could benefit from it. But definitely, if there is a more complicated process around the birth, I would advise to, to get them checked by somebody that has the experience and uh, the background and education that is suitable for that, wherever you are in the world. So this is not exactly about babies, well, it's sort of about babies, but uh, this is how I met you. I came when I was pregnant. Um, you do chiropractic care for pregnancy. So does chiropractic, chiropractic, chiropractic care in pregnancy help not just the mother, but also the baby and the birthing process? Yep, it is a really good thing to do during pregnancy as well. Again, for similar reasons, just, just remove any blockages that are there so that the pathway and the the process is as easy as possible. Being in pain already, you know, in your back, and then having to go through a birth process is, uh, you know, it is just more things that's going on at the same time, and more, you're more compromised. So I think that it's really nice to go through and for the sake of back pain during pregnancy, particularly, or difficulty, you know, moving and walking related to the pelvis while you're pregnant. So to have a good and healthy and strong, you know, physically, able pregnancy is really important because you, when you're physically able throughout the pregnancy you are coming into that birth healthier and uh, you know it's it's a bit like you know if you exercise and you do well during your pregnancy your spine is in a good place your pelvis is in a good place your nervous system is in a good place you know you are likely going to have a, a better experience through that birth it's a bit like going to a marathon you're practicing actually you know instead of going to the marathon and Stilettos and on exercise, you go there with trainers and you're ready, right? Because you've actually prepared for that birth. And I think that is important to prepare for birth in many ways, with our nutrition, with our uh, exercise, and also with our spinal health. So it, it optimizes the situation so that there isn't a restriction that's, you know, to the opening of the pelvis, that's because of restriction in the pelvis, at least. You know, let's remove those blockages so that the passage and the, the birthing process itself can be as easy as possible. And I have very positive feedback from gynecologists and midwives that I've worked with personally that uh, feel that it's a benefit to have a chiropractor uh, before and maybe even in the birthing room if you have the opportunity to have that because we can help to release and, and again, it's that release and relaxation that's so important. So it's not just about pain, it's about relaxing and being in a relaxed state together with being musculoskeletally optimized and in the best possible case you can be. So it's all about removing blockages in the road for the process to be as natural as possible. And I, from what I've read and heard, uh, chiropractic care can actually help as well with a breach presentation? Well, I think that the research probably hasn't come to the stage yet that we could say that that is like, yes, we can help the position of the baby. 
But again, it's about optimizing the mechanics. So when you are in the chiropractic care, you get uh, the optimal position of the pelvis. Is it likely that the, possible that the baby can find a better position? Is a question that uh, very often I have, and very many people come to chiropractors because of that. But it is uh, one of those things that we want to promote to make, to make sure that the health of the pelvis is good, so that we are actually allowing for the best possible position also for the baby. But I couldn't say that every time that's going to be this case because we can't guarantee that. Not every time, but it's it's worth a try before you do any. Exactly, in the absence of other options and in the absence of of uh, possible other you know treatments that can help that, it's a good thing to try at least in the process. And there will be no um, dangers to chiropractic care in pregnancy. No, there's no. Again, it's very very safe. It's really really uh, gentle, and the techniques are adjusted to that period of time. You would want to go to a chiropractor that's you know done the training on it and specialized in, but it is a really safe, very, very safe for the mother and the baby in the pregnancy. Is there anything else uh, that maybe I didn't ask or we haven't covered? No, I think that's good. We've gone over so many things. Uh, as we did earlier, we talked about the nappies, the importance of the spine of the baby when we're changing, turning the baby to the side instead of having to bend the legs up and put pressure on the spine. So just turning the baby to the side and wiping the baby that way and putting the nappy underneath the baby sideways, putting the baby back on and then changing, putting the back nappy on. That was a really important part of our conversation today. And I think uh, that's something to take home and that these nappies are brilliant because they are actually promoting good development and good spinal uh, development of the babies. So that's good. Perfect. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time and thank you so much for this interview.